Hi, my name is Sebastian Matteau and welcome back to this third uh, video tutorial in the series of on deep learning in Python with Keras. Now in the previous tutorial we saw how you can use Keras to build a very simple basic neural network of three layers and how you can train it and make predictions with it. Uh, but of course deep learning is not about working with uh, three layer networks but it is about working with very big networks that consists of dozens or hundreds of layers. So that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. We're not going to make one of these models ourselves, but rather we're going to download a pre-trained model, MobileNet version 2. Uh, and we're going to use MobileNet version 2 to uh, classify an image. So let's start by importing, up, importing MobileNet version 2. And then I say up from Keras dot applications dot MobileNet version 2 import MobileNet version 2. Um, so what is MobileNet version 2? Well, it's kind of like the second version, obviously, of a relatively small deep neural network that is relatively small because it is intended to be used on mobile devices, right? So it's a bit smaller in terms of the number of parameters than, for example, VGG19. But actually, in terms of its performance, it tends to be quite, certainly for the kinds of things that we're going to do here, quite comparable. Um, so, and I, I, I like to use it. Now, how do we download or, or instantiate this model? We say model is, it's really this, this simple, so it's really beautiful, mobile net version two. This would, the first time that you execute it, would actually download it from the internet. Um, if you want to, um, if you would call it like this, you would get the model architecture, but it would not be pre-trained. So all the weights would be random. If you want to have a pre-trained network, and we do want that, otherwise we would have to train it ourselves, uh, then you have to say weights is ImageNet. And this indicates that you want to use the weights uh, from the model as it was after it had been trained on the very big ImageNet uh, image data set. All right, let's run this. Okay, so now we have our model. Well, if I print it out here, I say model.summary here in the terminal, you can get an idea of how complex this model actually is. Up, model.summary. I will scroll up and you will see there are many, many, many layers. Many, 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 many. 150 or something like that. Um, it is still not a very big network because the, the layers are, there are many layers, but they're not very wide. So actually it's it's sort of, uh, most, most networks tend to have wider layers, but fewer of them. Um, but still, it's really, really deep. And here below, you can see that the total number of parameters is three and a half million. So in our previous tutorial, we created a simple network with 34 parameters, right? VGG19 actually has 150 million. So it's even 50 times bigger than this. So it gives you some idea of, of where this model stands in terms of model complexity. It's big, but not huge. And it is in terms of architecture, very deep, but not very wide. That's the kind of model that it is. Okay. So what we want to do now is actually classify the following image. Up, here we have, up, edit and view. So up, I'll put it aside. Um, this is Boof. <laughs> Boof is a bunny actually. And this is a photo that was taken on, on the Boof's birthday, uh, which she celebrated at my mother's place. And uh, my mother felt it was, uh, it was uh, you know, she was in for a treat and a little bit of decoration. So this is a bunny. I think maybe, maybe you recognize it as a bunny, but, but it's challenging for a computer to recognize that this is a bunny, right? So let's, let's see um, with all the hair and stuff. So let, let's see what MobileNet makes of it. Now, the first thing that we need to do is of course, imp um, create our, tra our, our data, right? It loads the image, loading the image and converting it into a format that uh, MobileNet will be able to understand. Now, uh, how does this work? I will type it and then I will explain it. Import NumPy as MP. So we're going to again use a NumPy array as input to the model. There are different formats that you can feed into the model, but I like NumPy arrays. And I say data is, and I will create an empty array with the correct shape. And it's going to be one by two, two, four by two, two, four by three. That is the kind of data that the, the kind of input data that the model expects. So what does this mean? The first dimension of length one indicates the individual observations. So those would be images. 
in, the, in our case. So we're going to feed only one image into the model. So the first uh, dimension is size one. If we would feed 10 images into the model, this would be of size 10. This is the height of the model, and this is the width of the model. So in other words, as you, and you can also kind of see that here in the, in the picture, we're feeding images of 224 by 224 pixels into it. And the last dimension, three, is the, 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 color, uh, the color index, right? The RGB, the color channels. So we're going to feed one image into it of 224 by 224 pixels with three color channels. Now, right now, of course, we haven't actually put the put the date the the uh, uh, we haven't actually put the image in there. But we can do it very easily by saying, up in the first index, we say uh, oh, from from image IO import I am read. So image IO is a library that reads images as as NumPy arrays, and we use em read up woof.jpg. Okay. Um, and then if I press F9, it will read it, right? And now we will have our data. Are we done? No, not quite yet. Let's take a look at what, what, um, at what our data kind of looks like. If I print it out, data, you see that they are values or sort of between zero and 255. Um, data.min zero data dot max is 225 55 um, mobile net actually expects um, input values between minus one and one right so the scale of the numbers is not yet correct and mo models are very uh, picky when it comes to receiving the correct input um, so this the input that we have here could strictly speaking be fed into the model but it would it doesn't really match the kind of input that it was trained on and as such it's likely to give very weird results i don't know exactly but it's quite likely to happen um, so we want to actually convert or pre-process this input in such a way that it matches the what the kind of input that the model was actually trained on now you could of course rescale the, the data yourself but actually um, keras also provides pre-processing functions that do that does do that for you from keras.applications.mobilenet up uh, oh, mobilenet version 2 import preprocess input and then we say data is preprocess input data up let's only execute this uh, oh wait also this of course preprocess input up and if i now look at data you see that they are numbers in the data dot min minus one data dot max to one range. So now we have, now data is exactly in the input format that we, uh, that we expect, uh, that, that mobile net version two expects the input to be in. That's nice. So what can we do now? Well, we can um, predict, we can say, okay, oh, classify, classify the image. Then we say predictions is model dot predict data. It's as simple as that. That's all there is to it. I run it. Well, or is there actually? It takes a little while. It's a big model, right? So it's it's, it's making prediction now. Up, <clears throat> come on, yeah. But now let's print out the predictions. Oof, those are a lot of numbers. What does it actually mean? What we want, basically, we were hoping maybe to get a string, right? Say, say bunny, for example. Um, but that's not what it gives. It just gives a whole bunch of numbers. Let's print out the shape. Ah, okay, now it becomes a little bit clearer, actually, what this means. So the predictions are in the same format, actually, as the predictions in the previous tutorial. Um, but our input, but the model is different, so the shape of the predictions is also different. The one refers to the, the individual observations that we're making predictions for. We are only making prediction for the predictions for this one image, so th there, that, that dimension is of length one. The thousand refers to the activation of all thousand neurons in the output layer. So MobileNet version two has a thousand uh, neurons in the output layer, and this and it will give the uh, each of those uh, the activation of all of those output neurons in a second dimension. So how do we then know? Um, how do we then know which class, which category, 
uh, the booth was classified as. Well, we can we can start by actually using again np.argmax. We can say np.argmax uh, predictions uh, axis is one. So what does it do? This returns the index of the neuron uh, with the highest value. So in the output layer, neuron number 155 had the highest activation. Oof, let's take a look. This was actually 155. Mm, 82, so what does that mean, 82? It means that 82% of all the activations is actually in that, that, that output neuron. So MobileNet is relatively sure that the category corresponding to neuron 155, that's, that's, that's what it is. Um, but we want to attach this, of course, to a um, to a uh, to to a label, right? A verbal label. Now, um, for that, of course, we could have some kind of lookup table that says for every neuron what category it corresponds to. But we don't have need to do that because actually, um, Akira's again has a function, a convenient function that does that for us. So we can say from Keras dot applications dot mobile net up, version two import decode predictions and then we say okay it goes like this actually i will type it and then i'll explain it for name comma description comma score in decode predictions um all right uh yes predictions top equals five and we're only getting the first one print and then we can say up Am I doing all of this correctly? I hope so. Format up desk uh, up, uh, score. Yeah, is that correct? I think so. You know what? Let me actually comment out this predictions thing. Otherwise, it will take it will do the predictions again and it will take time. Okay, I'm going to run this up. And now what we're doing here is here above. Oh wait, 100. One, the score is in a 0 0.1 range, and I want to use percentages, so I'm multiplying it by 100. Yep. Okay, so we're getting, we're decoding the predictions, and we're getting the top five categories uh, for each of our input observations. We only have one, of course, so we're only going to look at the, the decoded predictions for our one, the first input observation. And then it will give for the top five, so the top five neurons, uh, in, with their corresponding labels, it will give the name, sort of the technical name, a description of that neuron, and a score, and we print that out. And then we get the following, and what does it mean? It means that uh, the highest neuron, neuron 155, apparently corresponds to a Chichu, and uh, <laughs> it thinks it's really, it's quite confident, the model, that, that, it's, that it's a Chichu. Oh, I have a double percentage sign here. Um, uh, and it, then a Pekinese, then a Lhasa. So these are all dogs, basically, and not, none of them are bunnies. It, does that mean that MobileNet is very poor at recognizing uh, recognizing uh, images? Well, let's take a look at what a Chichu actually looks like. So there we go. There we have a Chichu. So I think it's fair enough, actually, that MobileNet classified this bunny as a Chichu because they look very similar, both with the pink ribbon in the hair and everything. So... Um, but here you see, so it is, I think it's a good attempt. It's incorrect, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a worthy attempt of, of MobileNet to classify, uh, to classify this. Now, so what have we seen in this, uh, in this, this tutorial? We, we've seen how you can load MobileNet version 2 as a pre-trained network, how you can create an input data with images, right, in the correct format and pre-processed so that it matches the expectations of the model. And how you can then make predictions for one image, but of course, the, if you do it for multiple images, it's the same way. Um, and then see whether the predictions make sense. And in this case, it classified a bunny almost correctly as a Chichu. Now, I hope you had fun with this. I think this is a lot of fun, actually. Um, in the next tutorial, we're going to again take a look at MobileNet version 2. But this time, we're actually going to uh, modify it and then use, use MobileNet, customize it slightly and train it to do something just a little bit different than what it was initially trained to do, so-called transfer learning. I hope to see you then. Bye.